Hi, this is Philip Day from the Campaign for Truth in Medicine, and you're listening to Up Close and Personal for November 2010. Firstly, we've got a new online uh, film, All Fall Down, about uh, psychiatric drugging of children. Children are under assault, diagnosed with fraudulent mental disorders, and forced onto dangerous and addictive psychotropic drugs, with prescription sales skyrocketing and government screening programs on the rise. The stimulant drug industry is big business, but how much is this plague costing our children? In your son's situation, I would recommend that we go with medication. We can start him off with these. Side effects include mania, aggression, hostility, psychosis, homicidal ideation. At least eight of the recent school shooters have taken these. Uh, let's see. We've got Springfield, Oregon school shootings, the Red Lake, Minnesota school murders, and uh, oh, the Columbine massacre. But uh, it's really up to you. I'd like you to spread this link as far and wide as possible because there are many families who think they're doing right by their kids by taking them off with supposed behavioural disorders to the doctor who then prescribes them these highly dangerous and addictive drugs. If you've got a child who's behaving abnormally, the first thing we look at is diet. The first thing we look at is the amount of cooked, processed food, the amount of uh, sugar, high fructose corn syrup going to the diet. Let's correct all of this first and nine times out of ten the child will come right. Most of these psychiatric disorders or so-called psychiatric disorders are nothing more than metabolic problems donning the apparel of a mental complaint. So they look mental but they're really not. And uh, your mind is being nourished by everything that you're eating. And kids of course are growing at an alarming rate. So the problem we've got here is if they're, if they're being fed cooked food and rubbish food all the time and they're drinking sodas and they're just um, you know, not exercising, this is the sort of problem we're going to get. Uh, but anyway, there's a really sinister side of this and a really tragic side, and that is that parents do what they think is best for their kids, and they think that when they hand these children over to psychiatric authorities or even to medical authorities, that there is some solid science underpinning this. There are no biological tests to diagnose any mental illness whatsoever. No biopsies, no urine tests, no CAT scans, MRIs, nothing. So they just look at a child and tick off a list of behavioural problems, and then tell them the disease they've got and then they give them drugs. This is not science, this is highly organised and incredibly profitable scam going on and kids are getting into major problems. The suicide rates have rocketed. So this is a timely film, courtesy of the Citizens Commission on Human Rights. It's really a trailer, it lasts about 13 and a half minutes. The new film out is this one. Uh, highly recommend it and uh, um, have a look. Next, coconut oil is more efficacious for Alzheimer's than all big pharma has to offer. Um, this uh, covers the case of a remarkable uh, situation where a doctor's husband made a remarkable reversal of his serious Alzheimer's problem using coconut oil, taking about three to four tablespoons of coconut oil. Coconut oil is a saturated fat. We've been conditioned to um, get nervous about the word saturated. But this fat is, uh, is made up of medium-chain triglycerides, which, from which the, uh, the brain uses and, and actually uses those fats to make ketones with. Ketones help remove plaque in Alzheimer's uh, patients. There's a whole dietary thing that goes with this, which you'll find in the new version of the ABCs of Disease. So do have a look at that. Um, also, I've tacked on a compendium of research articles on coconut oil, which is well worth looking at. Is mainstream media catching on? The Sydney Morning Herald writes, Many of us have heard that healthy nutrition plays an important role in preventing a number of types of cancer and may help us to reduce the spread of cancer once it has started. Um, Sydney Morning Herald, of course, is a mainstream Australian newspaper. Is the main, mainstream media catching on? We get articles like this um, now and then, and lots of us kind of sigh and think, oh great, the dam is breaking, but it really isn't. Uh, so anyway, if you're of a mind to, you might want to send... Sydney Morning Herald a uh, quick email thanking them for that article because they didn't have to do it. Children without MMR jabs should be banned from school, claims a public health official. Dr Sohail Bharti, a director of one of the largest health trusts in Britain, said the draconian measure was the only way to ensure a higher uptake of the vaccine. What you need to do is you need to get used to doing the complete opposite from whatever the BBC tells you to do. So if you get an idiot like this coming out and saying that children are going to actually be uh, banned from school if they don't have a highly toxic MMR vaccine, 
then you're getting a, a, a rude education in the type of world that you live in. By the way, what a wonderful way to stay out of the clutches of the uh, laughable British state school system. Fat but malnourished students on the rise in Korea. Uh, this article through from Credence Asia. Obesity and unhealthy diet are emerging as major issues for elementary, middle and high school students in South Korea. The obesity rate of elementary, middle and high school students last year was 13%, 2% higher than that of the previous year. Because you see, a lot of these Asian countries, uh, most notably China, South Korea, the Philippines, China in a big way, of course, uh, because of its heavy industrialization now. Traditionally, these cultures were on agrarian diets, which were plant-based diets with little bits of meat. Now they're doing this whole thing that Britain went through in the early 1800s, uh, and that is you're seeing the level of plant-based uh, plant foods coming way down, the amount of meat going way up, and the amount of processed foods coming in from nowhere rising to just over 50%. This is the big issue because the body cannot make more of you with anything other than plant-based foods. The reason for that is when you ingest meat, the meat is invariably cooked, which has wrecked its vitamin C content such as it is. The enzymes are all dead. 50% of the protein is wrecked. Much of the fat material in there has gone as well in terms of corruption of heat. So this is not a good way to get nutrition. So when you see that our diets in the Western cultures have gone from basically 5% meat and 95% plant-based foods down to, in fact, the plant-based has gone from 95% down to around 7%. And the meat content's gone from 5% up to 42%. And you've got the processed foods going from zero up to 51%, you begin to see that these diseases we suffer from, at the same time as loading on the weight, are pushing us into, into gross malnutrition. So, this, this of course shows, you know, you look at these country, countries like uh, the USA, Britain, Australia, New Zealand, heavy rates of obesity. And when you look at these people, you think, oh, they've, you know, you should padlock their fridge, they're getting way too much. They're actually not getting enough but they're getting a lot of junk. They're eating food that is not really food at all. It's highly processed commercial material palmed off on the public as foodstuffs. Placebo fraud rocks the very foundation of medical science. This is a great one. Um, you all know those thousands of clinical trials conducted over the last few decades comparing drug to placebo pills. Well, it turns out all those studies must now be completely thrown out as utterly non-scientific because the drug industry has never had to declare what they're using as placebo or whether the placebo is even active. I mean, if, you are, if you're running a diabetes drug and you're giving as a control a placebo pill as a sugar pill, that, that placebo is not inactive, certainly not in a diabetes trial. So whole thing's got to be unpicked. Why you should avoid root canals like the plague, uh, this is very important. If any of you have got root canals or considering root canals, dead teeth in the head are a major danger, long-term systemic danger. Do have a look at that. Statin drugs cause liver damage, kidney failure and cataracts, says the British Medical Journal. Um, the weekly health tip, hypothyroidism, ladies, this is most prevalent among you. Hashimoto's disease is the most uh, uh, common form of this. Uh, and it's where your immune system is manufacturing antibodies against healthy thyroid tissue. Main cause, stress. Uh, this is stress that has institutionalized itself into the hind brain, uh, usually over a 30 to 45 day period, and now you are a, what I call a stress bunny. Your hormones are being affected by your thoughts. Your thoughts affect your biochemistry. That's a whole fascinating, we could do a whole tour just on that subject, of how does mind affect matter. Um, but subclinical hypothyroidism is basically when you get cold extremities and all kinds of problems like that and uh, we have a whole routine for this so do check that out. Some good news, um, we've got the Australian tour tickets up now, this is the Victory Tour, I'm going to come down there and uh, let you know all the latest, it's going to be a lovely tour, we've just finished doing it in the UK and Ireland and um, we've had some fantastic comments coming in on that, so do pick up your tickets, we'll be featuring um, some interesting information, part of which we're going to showcase uh, at the, uh, during the tour, but also beforehand, because we've got some very interesting developments coming up uh, with Credence. On the European side, um, the European Union is in serious trouble. Uh, Ireland is melting down, the whole economy is moving towards default. Britain's in serious trouble because we've extended £88 billion pounds worth of credit to Ireland, and you know we're in serious danger of, of, of losing that unless we now pay seven billion towards Ireland's recovery. And this, of course, across the Eurozone has much wider ramifications because if Portugal defaults, we're going to get the same problem there. And then if a bigger economy like Spain, which is also in trouble, defaults, serious issues.
And, you know, very timely, the EU accounts have been rejected by their auditors for the 16th year in a row because of fraud. I mean, the whole th system is, is just beyond redemption. That you would be ruled by an unaccountable government by decree which hasn't signed its accounts off for 16 years because of fraud. We also see that um, von Rompuy, the uh, president of Ireland, uh, president of the European Union, should I say, might as well be the president of Ireland, we see that um, he's now stating that uh, people who speak out against the European Union are in some way uh, treasonous, uh, but at the same time he's saying, oh, this problem with the European Union and the Euro could finish the Eurozone for good. The left hand doesn't know what the right hand's doing. That's it, nothing else to report for now. Um, I'm going to be uh, sending out the Christmas message probably slightly early this year. We're going to be also doing a 30-minute film on food, putting together raw food, raw dishes, this type of thing. The best thing to do is just get the food around you and pitch in and have a go. It's absolutely delicious and I'm looking forward to doing the film. So keep an eye on for that. I can't promise it'll be out before Christmas time. Probably it's going to be um, maybe early spring before we get that out. Uh, but in the meantime, if there's anything else I can do or any of my staff, don't hesitate to get in contact. Otherwise, have a wonderful November and we'll speak to you next month. Bye-bye.